expert level snakes. We've all seen them. They're the ones on Instagram. They're the hot boys, the thick boys, the long boys, and the water boys. And today we're going to talk all about the five coolest expert level snakes. I'm Adam. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. <laughs> serious what I mean by expert level snakes is ones that are larger or bigger or more dangerous anything that requires a special level of care that a normal person who doesn't dedicate most of their life towards these big creatures or dangerous creatures or hard to keep for creatures probably couldn't do probably couldn't take care of these are the snakes that you see on Instagram the ones that Everyone's going goo goo gaga over probably very difficult to keep and without boring you about what we're talking about Let's talk about it. Number five, African rock pythons. And we're gonna have a tie actually, African rock pythons and green anacondas. And here's why I put them together and excluded other big snakes. These guys are known for having angry, ugly temperaments sometimes. Not always, but especially African rock pythons, these guys are known for being a little bit difficult to care for. Not only that, but they're huge. African rock pythons, not as big as green anacondas, but can still get somewhere between 14 and 16 feet. They're pretty quick when they strike at you and they don't mind doing that quite often. So that's why I would put these guys in the expert category as opposed to something like a Burmese python, which you won't see on this list. Both of these snakes have something in common. They're very big, they need big spaces, and they are expensive to feed because once they get to full size, you're gonna need to feed them something like a chicken or a baby goat or a baby pig or giant rabbits or something like that because they do get quite large. And with that incredible size comes a degree of danger. Now, let me be very clear. Big snakes or any snakes aren't out to kill you and crush you and eat you. Snakes do not want anything to do with you most of the time. Snakes would rather be away from you than eat you, but accidents do happen and it really only takes one instance of a snake hurting or killing someone to change a bylaw an entire country or state or province or whatever and if you're from New Brunswick Canada you know all about what I'm talking about African rock pythons or really any pythons over a certain size are no longer allowed in that entire province because a very sketchy story that you can read about right here and to round this out the thing about anacondas because a lot of people are gonna say oh they're not that hard to take care of they don't have even uneven temperaments well maybe for some but if they do bite you you're gonna know about it they tend to hold on, which is very different than most snakes. I guess any snake who thinks that your food is going to latch onto you and try to constrict you. And that's the thing. If you're a normal sized human being and a 16 foot constrictor gets a hold of you, it's over. That's it. Lights out. There's really not much that you can do about it. I mean, unless you can somehow find their cloaca and stick a finger in there, that's probably a good way to get them to let go. But otherwise, really difficult thing about anacondas, they need big water receptacles. And I know a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube will show you their anaconda enclosure. Well, oh, it's big enough for them to get in. These are semi-aquatic snakes in the wild. They spend a lot of their time in the rivers and streams. And generally, if you're going to give them the best life, you need a giant receptacle. In my opinion, to keep a green anaconda properly, you need basically a room in your home dedicated to each individual. All right, let's go for something a little bit smaller. Number four, elephant trunk snakes. What the heck is an elephant trunk snake is maybe what you're thinking. If you know what these guys are, you know why they're on the list. They're incredibly cool. These guys are amazing. They have these weird, really cool, thin skin type scaly thing is, I don't know, they look like an elephant trunk. That's why they're called that. They don't look like any other snake, just the texture of their skin uh, and they're fully aquatic. So there's that. And if you want to know a little bit more about how to keep an aquarium and why I choose not to have aquatic species, axolotl video up here. It explains all the water cycling changes and pH challenges. And it's just kind of a pain in the backside, to be honest with you. And that's why they're on the list. Not only that, but their diets are really hard to take care of as well because they eat fish, they eat frogs, things like that. And a lot of the times it's hard to get them to eat, even if you can, because most of them are wild caught. They're super stressed out. It's very difficult to acclimate them. They generally come with a white fungus, which is really difficult to get rid of because most fish places or aquariums or any type of store that's going to sell something for a fungal infection or fungus 
in the water aren't familiar with this white fungus that comes on elephant trunk snakes. So best of luck getting rid of it. Generally leave it the heck alone is what most people suggest. But even small snakes need bigger enclosures, bigger aquariums because that water cycle thing that I talked about, I won't get too much into depth of it, but 55 to 150 gallons depending on the size of the snake and you're gonna need a secure screen top which might be hard to facilitate and you're gonna need a heat source, right? So overall it's very difficult to keep these snakes in comparison to any other snake that I know about anyway. Not super dangerous towards you but one thing that's really cool about them is they're very quick. So if you're gonna feed them and they choose to take food from you, they're gonna latch onto that food very quick. They're kind of this dopey looking, super slow type of snake. And then all of a sudden, boom, lightning when a fish comes along. So that's kind of cool. And you can have a little aquarium of fish and then they just start going missing after a while, but they will escape. And if they do, they don't last very long and best of luck finding a snake. Anyone who's lost one knows exactly what I'm talking about here. And of course, I mentioned that most of them are wild caught. This is always a challenge. It is a pain in the butt to try to acclimate them. And even if you can, a lot of the times they come with parasites. Uh, normally with this snake, it's the fungus thing that I was talking about more than a parasite problem. But either way, you wanna stay away from wild caught as much as you possibly can. And best of luck finding yourself an elephant trunk snake that was bred in captivity. I don't know anyone who does this. But if you want to know a little bit more about them, very cool. They come from places like Malaysia, Sumatra, and they can live in either brackish water or fresh water. So very cool. Do some research if you want to know about something that you'll probably never own. Number three, this is going to be a total shock. Can't do a list without having these guys. Hots, venomous snakes. Any type of venomous snake, in my opinion, is an expert level snake. Advanced for sure, because... I mean, that's the quickest way to die when you have a pet snake, is a venomous snake, right? And I'm not going to say that it's uh, irresponsible to keep venomous snakes. I will say, though, I don't care how much of a controversy this stirs up in the comment section. If you are free handling venomous snakes, you should put a big disclaimer, do not do this. It is very stupid. It is not smart at all. I know that the dude with the fingernails, David Froelich, whatever his name is, does it on Instagram and gets a million hits from it. Awesome. Very cool. You know what else is going to get a million hits? Your obituary if you keep doing that. Because in my opinion, it's never going to end well. Like, I've never uh, heard of someone who's 70 years old who's never been bit or, you know, had to go to the hospital or had some sort of complication from keeping snakes for a long, uh, venomous snakes for a very long period of time. And if you want to look up on the internet, venomous snake kills keeper, there is a million stories for you to read. Very sad and overall just kind of dangerous to keep but here's why you might want to keep them and here's why they're on the list of coolest intermediate snakes or whatever this video is called they're beautiful a lot of venomous snakes show this kind of display of color or pattern or something that makes them look different than non-venomous snakes i think the best examples um eyelash vipers are a good example rhinoceros vipers are a great example there's a bunch of uh, uh, coral snakes, a bunch of different snakes that look so cool. And even like a copperhead has a very cool pattern that you're never really going to find on a non-venomous snake. So that's one thing. And then of course they have got a, a different type of personality. They've got a different movement, like a sidewinder, for example, is a great example of that. Another great example of someone I saw on Facebook and one of the groups had a sidewinder, bit him on the thumb. And that's it. He was in the hospital for three days and racked up a $70,000 bill. So I don't think I need to justify why they're on the list and why they're an expert or advanced species to keep. But that's the other thing too I want to touch on. You're going to need anti-venom available to you or you really should have this available to you at a hospital or a treatment center or a zoo or something. And a lot of places don't really have this. And you can't, there's no one size fits all when it comes to anti-venom by the way. Uh, I mean, if you're going to have a pit viper or you're going to have a monocle cobra, completely different types of cure for their bite and envenomation. So, in my opinion, this should be kept to an absolute uh, expert level. You have your own room. It's locked. The enclosures are locked. Extreme amount of care. Very difficult to care for, but very cool to watch on Facebook and YouTube if you want to take a look at something really interesting that, again, you'll never own. Number two, expert level snake that is very cool, emerald tree boas. Now, a lot of people will say this isn't really an advanced or expert level. Shouldn't put them in the same category as venomous snakes. 
Maybe you're right, but there is a few things that make these more than intermediate in my opinion. And here's a big difference too. I thought that they were going to be on the intermediate list follow up that I'm doing in a couple weeks, but after looking at the difference between green tree pythons and emerald tree boas, I found that it's actually quite difficult to keep tree boas and here's why. They need a big enclosure. 3x3x4. Three by three by That's right. This is a giant enclosure. I know a lot of people will say, oh, you don't need it to be that big. This is what people who breed them suggest. Putting them in an 18x18x24 18 by 18 by Exoterra is not going to cut it. That is not cool. I don't care what Zoomed or Exoterra or whatever company that makes enclosures says. These are not big enough. Generally, you cannot find one on the market that is made by one of these big manufacturers that isn't custom built that is good enough for an emerald tree boa. But here's why they're really cool. They begin life orange or red or yellow, and then they transform into green over the next year or so. So they look really cool when they're babies, and they look really cool when they're adults, of course, too. Now, a few things to note with these guys. In their big enclosure, you need a high humidity level, but you need constant airflow. Yeah, these things are very difficult to maintain, which is why chameleons, in my opinion, are hard to care for, because if you're gonna have constant airflow, you need to constantly be introducing humidity and moisture. And how do you do that if you don't have a misting system? Well, you're gonna be down there living your life with a spray bottle in your hand. You're gonna have a giant forearm by the end of it because you're gonna get a workout from spraying that thing so much. So generally, you're gonna need a misting system. Also, it's really easy to keep humidity if you uh, plant plants. And although these guys stay in the trees for most of the time, Plants or bioactive enclosures for snakes are very hard to care for, they're very hard to keep, and generally your plants kind of go everywhere. In terms of food, it's actually pretty easy to switch these guys onto rodents, although in the wild they're going to eat birds mostly. And they're going to have these giant teeth because the way that they eat in the wild is they grab a bird out of the air. And they need big teeth for that so that they can ensure when they lunge after food, they get it. And lastly, the reason that they're on the list is, although they're not huge, between four and eight feet. So an eight foot snake is gonna need a lot of room and I don't think these guys would be dangerous. I don't imagine that anyone's ever died from being constricted by an emerald tree boa. But I mean, at the end of the day, they are pretty big and they're on this list. All right, number one. And here's why I put this species number one. They're a big snake. They should probably be handled with somebody else. You probably shouldn't handle them yourself, but they can be docile and tame and very intelligent and come in a million different morphs. Reticulated pythons is what I'm talking about. Now I'm sure you might be thinking or asking in the comment section, why are Burmese pythons not on this list? Well, first of all, size discrepancy. Reticulated pythons are for sure bigger, but also they're quicker and uh, less docile just as a general rule of thumb. Now each is an individual, of course. I'm sure there's berms out there that have wrapped up their humans or bite or strike or pain in the neck to deal with but in general reticulated pythons are a little bit less lazy they move around a little bit more and i think are a little bit more expert uh, than burmese pythons now although they do require a ton of food and a ton of space and it's kind of um, a hassle or not a hassle but a lot of work to care for these guys they're not like a ball python where if you left for three days and came back you'd be okay they're probably gonna have poop in their water by that point or spill it or whatever uh, and food's really expensive, and the caging is really expensive. So they're a little bit harder to keep, but they are absolutely gorgeous. They are super smart, super intelligent looking. Uh, they're going to give you a workout if you try to handle them. And overall, they are amazing snakes that come in a million different morphs. I am not crapping on these guys at all. I think they're amazing. I just think that maybe you should be an expert before you consider getting one as a pet. Also, reticulated pythons are the longest snake in the world, so we had a little bit of both, heaviest bodied being uh, green anacondas and longest being reticulated pythons. So if you're going to get one of these, have a friend help you out with it. Not smart to handle a 20 foot snake by yourself, even if you are strong enough, and have a big enclosure and post pictures on Instagram and tag me because I want to see them. So that's it. That's the five coolest expert level snakes, in my opinion. What do you think? Did I miss something? Should I have added something? Did something not belong on the list? Put it in the comment section below. And as always, I took this idea out of the comment section below like I do every video. So if there's a video you want to see, pop it down there. I'll take a look and I'll make a video. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button over there, I'd appreciate it if you did. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.